the South to North Water Diversion Project is now relying on trains to transport water. This innovative method of water transfer is truly mind-blowing. A train carrying 2,150 tons of water is traveling from Hunan to Inner Mongolia. But isn't it too costly to transport water by train? Actually, this is a new method of the South to North Water Diversion. This speeding train is delivering water from the Dangjiakou Reservoir, the source of the middle route of the South to North Water Diversion, also known as the SNWT, to Ordos in Inner Mongolia, covering a distance of 1,530 kilometers. It sounds absurd that a train is taking over the task of transporting water from the SNWT Middle Route Project, which had an investment of over 400 billion yuan. But this is indeed happening. This is the Dan Water North Transport Project by China's large state-owned enterprise Pingmei Shenma Group, referred to as Pingmei hereafter. This story starts with the distribution of China's coal resources. The Ordos region in Inner Mongolia has abundant coal reserves, totaling over 250 billion tons, accounting for one-sixth of the national total. Meanwhile, the areas with the highest demand for coal are in the economically developed regions along the eastern and southeastern coast. The Chinese Communist Party, CCP, often uses trade as a weapon. From the end of 2020 to early 2023, it banned the imports of Australian coal. This backfired, causing coal shortages and price hikes in eastern coastal areas, leading to power cuts and significant losses to industrial production and people's lives. China, being the largest producer and consumer of coal, struggles with transportation capacity, unable to meet the demand for coal. Hence, the CCP started transporting coal from the north southward by train. However, this approach is quite foolish because transporting coal over 1,800 kilometers by train to the south and then transferring it to the coast is extremely costly. For coal-consuming enterprises, it might be cheaper to buy coal from Australia or Indonesia. Some netizens commented that moving coal south by train, under the CCP's guidance to ensure self-sufficiency in coal supply, large-scale development of Inner Mongolia's coal resources began, with many large state-owned coal enterprises moving into Inner Mongolia. Pingmei did not lag behind. In June 2022, Pingmei decided to invest 3.5 billion yuan in the local Jianyuan Group to build a 1.2 million ton Atopic Acid Phase 1 project. The project officially started in September. According to the feasibility study, the project's annual water consumption is about 1.65 million tons. Amidst the bustling construction, equipment, and material procurement, the Ordos local government suddenly intervened. In November 2022, the Ordos Water Resources Bureau strengthened the control of water intensity indicators and created strict measures for construction projects. High water consuming projects like thermal power, steel, petrochemicals, and chemicals were strictly prohibited from using groundwater, and the approval of new water extraction permits from overloaded sources was suspended. This harsh move by the Ordos Water Resources Bureau effectively cut down large state owned enterprises from developing coal in the area. This might indicate that the local groundwater resources have reached their limit. Ordos is surrounded by deserts, untouched by rivers, making water a scarce resource. Previously, many industrial projects relied on extracted groundwater for production. In the northern part of China, the Yellow River forms a shape like the lowercase n. Unfortunately for Ordos, it is situated in the middle of this n. The Yellow River implements a total volume control for water resources, and regions can only apply for water allocation based on the total available water. The Yellow River Basin is also one of the earliest regions in China to experiment with water rights trading. To extract water directly from the Yellow River surface water or groundwater in the basin, one must pay a water resource fee to obtain the water rights. However, for Pingmei's chemical project, the Yellow River is too far away, too expensive, and its water quality and quantity are not guaranteed. Without water, production cannot proceed. With substantial investments already made in the construction of the factory, halting operations would result in significant losses. The executives at Pingmei would not be able to account for this to the Henan Provincial State-Owned Asset Supervision and Administration Commission, and they would fail performance evaluations. As experienced leaders of large state-owned enterprise, they looked to their politician friends for help. They approached the leaders responsible for both Henan and Inner Mongolia provinces, officials from various ministries in Beijing, and leaders in Ordos. 
Despite hosting numerous banquets with Mao Tai liquor and giving away red envelopes, after over six months of efforts, the water supply issue for the project remained unresolved. Meanwhile, the smooth progress of the factory construction brought no comfort to Ping Mei's leaders. At this critical moment, an advisor suggested use trains to transport water. Since coal from Ordos is transported to Jiangxi via the north-south coal transport trains, many of these trains return empty. Using the return trains to transport water could not only meet the factory's water needs, but also allow excess water to be sold along the route for profit. This idea was a revelation. Ping Mei Group's party secretary and chairman Li Mao pondered for a moment before decisively saying, "Do it," and thus the Ping Mei Water Transport Project was born. The leaders at Ping Mei are known for their swift and decisive actions. On June 9th, 2023, Ping Mei Group signed a water transport agreement with Xichuan County, where the Danjiangko Reservoir is located. According to Ping Mei Group, the project involves the construction of a 10 million ton per year water extraction, transportation, treatment, and sales system, with locations spread across Xichuan County, Yuncheng, Linfei, Yan'an, Yulin, Ordos, and Hohat. The main product is potable drinking water, and the construction period is about two years. On the afternoon of July 12, 2023, Ping Mei leaders visited the Zhengzhou Municipal Design Institute for discussions. Both parties highly recognized the water transport project and thoroughly discussed various aspects such as water extraction, transportation, transshipment, loading and unloading, storage and distribution, and terminal water treatment. In China, once a project is decided by the leadership, the feasibility study report will always conclude that it is technically feasible and economically reasonable, and the environmental impact assessment will state that the environment and society can bear it. Following the discussions, the leader of the Zhengzhou Municipal Design Institute immediately expressed their support. "Do it," they said. Ping Mei Group entrusted the institute to start the feasibility study. The Zhengzhou Municipal Design Institute wasted no time and immediately formed a project team of over 20 people that same afternoon. By August 11th, they submitted the project feasibility report, and on August 22nd, the report passed the review smoothly. Completing a feasibility study and passing the review of such a large project in just 40 days is impressive, showcasing the incredible speed and efficiency possible in China. Xu Xinyi is the former director of the South to North Water Diversion Planning and Design Management Bureau and former president of the Water Science Research Institute at Beijing Normal University. He remarked, "Using empty return trains to transport water not only optimizes resource utilization." But also alleviates the drinking water shortage for people in the receiving areas. On December 5, 2023, with the order from Jiang Junfu, Deputy General Manager of Ping Mei Group, a special train carrying over 2,000 tons of water from the Danjiangko Reservoir set off along the Haoji Railway towards Ordos in Inner Mongolia, marking the start of the water transport project. This train traveled approximately 1,530 kilometers, arriving in Ordos three days later. Not only did experts endorse the project, but many media outlets also praised it. The project significantly improved the quality of life for residents along the route, and greatly boosted the local economy. They highlighted the convenient transportation method as its main feature, showcasing China's wisdom and strength in resource utilization and management. Such glowing reviews might make one chuckle. Despite the absence of publicly accessible feasibility reports or economic data for the water transport project, its existence implicitly critiques the South to North Water Diversion Project, which has been touted by the Chinese government as a grand ecological and livelihood project. It raises two key issues: one, the South to North Water Diversion Middle Route's water supply is insufficient. The water transfer cost of the project might be more expensive than transporting water by train. This prompts the question. Why invest 55 billion U.S. dollars in the middle route of the South to North water diversion when the train transport method could have been adopted from the start? Additionally, the quality of transported water might not meet the required standards. The South to North water diversion project, considered the largest cross basin water transfer project in human history, has total investments exceeding 77 billion U.S. dollars. It is divided into three routes: east, middle, and west. Our focus here is mainly on the middle route. The middle route diverts water from the Danjiangko Reservoir, located on the upper reaches of the Han River, a tributary of the Yangtze River. Using a dedicated supply channel, the water flows naturally, supplying regions along the way until it reaches Beijing and Tianjin. 
The main channel of the middle route spans 1,246 kilometers. According to the regulations of the project, the annual average water transfer volume of the middle route is 9.5 billion cubic meters. By the end of April 2014, the total investment for the first phase of the middle route project had reached 28.7 billion US dollars, not including ongoing investments. The investment amount continues to increase due to ongoing construction and maintenance, covering main projects, supporting facilities, and ecological protection measures. The actual total investment in the south-to-north water diversion remains a mystery to the public, as does the unit cost of delivering water to Beijing. The fact that Pingmei is transporting water from south to north by train means that a more convenient route exists. The south to north water diversion middle route passes through Suzhou in Hebei province, which has a railway line to Ordos. Comparing the Chinese railway network with the map of the south to north water diversion middle route, loading water in Suzhou could save at least half the railway mileage. However, Pingmei's leaders did not dare to take this approach. According to China Science and Technology Network, as of June 12 this year, the first phase of the south to north water diversion project's central route had diverted a total of 10 billion cubic meters of water to Beijing since it first began full operation in December 2014. According to the Chinese government website, as of June 4 this year, the middle route of the south to north water diversion project has cumulatively diverted nearly 65 billion cubic meters of water. The average annual diversion volume is 6.8 billion cubic meters, which is only 70% of the designed diversion volume. According to the 2023 Water Resources Bulletin released by the Beijing Water Authority, in 2023, the total water resources of Beijing were over 4 billion cubic meters. The annual average number of permanent residents was 21 million, with a per capita water resource volume of 190 cubic meters and a per capita water consumption of 186 cubic meters. This water consumption is far below the national average per capita, indicating that Beijing's water resources are very scarce. Beijing, as the capital of China, is home to many top government officials and the elite. If Beijing faces such a severe water shortage, diverting water from Shijiazhuang to Ordos would undoubtedly mean competing with these officials for water, which the leaders of Pingmei would dare not do. This also contradicts the original intention of the water diversion project's middle route. Despite the official rhetoric about the project's significance and its benefits to people's livelihoods, its main goals are twofold, supplying water to Beijing and showcasing the current party leadership's achievements. Ensuring sufficient water for the capital has always been the top priority of the North to South water diversion project. On May 13, 2021, Xi Jinping inspected the Taocha Canal Head Project of the South to North Water Diversion Project and then toured the Danjiangko Reservoir by boat. She emphasized that the South to North Water Diversion Project is a major strategic infrastructure and must be maintained from a political standpoint, ensuring the safety of the project, water supply, and water quality. From that day forward, the project became an overriding political task. If the water supply volume is insufficient, the water volume of other areas along the route can be reduced to prioritize Beijing's water supply. However, ensuring the safety of the water quality along the diversion route is not easy. Renowned water conservancy expert Dr. Wang Wei Luo pointed out that after the main canal of the South to North Water Diversion Project enters the Haihe River Basin, it basically runs parallel to the Beijing-Guangzhou Railway from south to north towards Beijing. To the west of the main canal are the Taihang Mountains, which are elevated. Most of the reservoirs and dams in the Haihe River Basin are located to the west of the main canal. To the east of the main canal is the North China Plain, which is lower in elevation, and the rivers flow from west to east. The central route of the South to North Water Diversion Project runs from south to north, intersecting almost perpendicularly with natural west to east flowing rivers. Many of these engineering projects adopt a 20-year flood standard for flood control. When floods exceed the standard, the floodwaters from natural rivers will overflow the riverbanks and surpass the dikes of the main canal, flowing into the canal. Preventing floodwaters from natural rivers from entering the main canal is crucial because of the severe pollution in China's rivers, especially in the Haihe River Basin. Ensuring that natural floodwaters do not enter the canal during major floods is extremely challenging and expensive, but it is a task directly mandated by Xi Jinping and is the primary political task for officials. On the west side of the main canal of the South to North Water Diversion Project, in the Huaihe and Haihe River basins, there are over 2,000 reservoirs and dams, most of which have been in use for over 50 years, exceeding their typical lifespan. 
Many of these are in dangerous conditions and may fail during heavy rains and floods. When floods rush down from the mountains to the west and encounter the concrete and steel channels of the SNWD project running from south to north, it's unrealistic to expect the floodwaters to obediently pass underneath through siphons without obstruction. The large amount of material carried by the floodwaters can block these siphons. The cross-section of the riverbeds, banks, and channels cannot guarantee the smooth passage of such massive floods. The SNWD channels would act as high walls blocking the floods, raising water levels and endangering the lives of millions. Sadly, the leadership of the CCP only sees the so-called great achievements and completely disregards the safety of the people during decision-making. Dr. Wang Weilo analyzed the impact of the SNWD middle route channels on flood control. He used the July 20, 2021 Henan Zhengzhou flood as an example. According to official data, this severe rainstorm caused almost 400 deaths and missing persons. It affected over 14 million people and resulted in direct economic losses of over 120 billion yuan, about 16.5 billion U.S. dollars. Dr. Wang pointed out that ensuring the operational safety of SNWD Middles Route and preventing the polluted floodwaters of Zhengzhou from entering the channels was the top priority for the CCP Central Committee, the State Council, and Henan Provincial Party Committee and Government, the Zhengzhou Municipal Party Committee and Government, and especially the PLA officers and soldiers involved in the rescue efforts. This priority led to inadequate and delayed rescue measures in Zhengzhou, Additionally, the SNWD middle route channels released excess water into Zhengzhou's rivers, adding over 120 cubic meters per second, which exceeded the capacity of the Jialu River, raised water levels, and caused river overflows that flooded city streets and worsened the disaster. After the flood, the Chinese government invested heavily in reconstruction projects, including over 20 flood reinforcement projects for the SNWD. The SNWD middle route's susceptibility to heavy rains and floods was confirmed by the Zhengzhou disaster. During the 2023 beijing tianjin hebei flood, to mitigate the flood threat to the Fangshan district Beiji River underground channel project of the SNWD middle route, local authorities increased the flood discharge rate of the Beiji River, which expanded the flood-affected areas and depth downstream, aggravating property losses for residents. In the eyes of the CCP government, the numerous dangers at river channel intersections and overflow issues in buildings arise because upstream reservoirs and dams fail to control water flow, natural rivers lacked sufficient capacity, and the embankments on both sides of the channels were not high enough. In essence, the scale of the SNWD middle route is still too small and needs expansion. On October 24, 2023, the Standing Committee of the 14th National People's Congress passed a state council proposal to issue an additional 1 trillion yuan in bonds to support post-disaster reconstruction and enhance disaster prevention and relief capabilities. This was an opportunity to increase investment in the SNWD project under the guise of post-disaster reconstruction. The use and purpose of this 1 trillion yuan special bond do not require feasibility studies or public knowledge and participation. In theory, the impact of flood control should have been addressed during the feasibility study in the SNWD project, meaning it should have been considered before the project was decided upon. By the time the project was completed, these issues should have been resolved. However, practice has shown that the SNWD middle route project significantly impacted the 2023 floods in the beijing tianjin hebei region, and this impact was both negative and substantial. This means that the SNWD project had a major negative impact on flood control in the beijing tianjin hebei region, becoming a pressing issue for Xi Jinping and the Central Committee of the Chinese Communist Party. This urgency has led to the need for a portion of the 1 trillion yuan in special bonds. The CCP government does not dare to tell the public about these issues, nor do they dare to publicly disclose how this enormous amount of special bonds will be spent or what the expected outcomes are. They avoid revealing details because the government fears future accountability. The massive investment in the SNWD middle route project, which the CCP originally intended as a grand achievement of conquering nature, has instead become a trap with endless repercussions. Given these issues, using trains to transport water might indeed have been a simpler and more effective solution.